<laughs> hey people, this is Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a neo-traditional face. Enjoy. Alright people, how to draw a neo-traditional face. Now this one's going to be a bit more realistic. Because you know, I noticed a lot of people are struggling when it comes to sort of a realistic one, just getting everything where it should be on the face. So this one's mainly looking at how to get everything in the right place. I'm going to teach you guys some pretty good techniques for it. And hopefully it'll help you out. Draw yourself a box shape. Divide it in four. Now where you got this line just here, come back just a very slight bit, just like only a little bit. Bring a line coming down from this little bit here straight to this corner. So it makes a slight diagonal line. Come off of there. About the same sort of distance. Coming up to this corner. So you've got these two lines coming slightly at an angle. Now this should help you get the face right because the face, even when it's sort of looking straight, isn't sort of straight down. It slightly comes out. You know, the forehead's further in, the nose comes out, and the jaw comes out further. So this should hopefully help you. Now when you bring a little line here, just slightly lower than halfway between this box. So maybe about two thirds of the way down. Come to about there. And here it's sort of like halfway-ish. I want you to bring a curve, coming fairly straight because the hair is going to come out of this box. Coming down, touching, you know, from the corner up here, touching this line, touching this one. And when you get to this line here, I want you to bring this line back a bit, touch this line, just in this corner bit, quite sharply. And once you get there, curve this out. Outwards, and you're going to come out the box. And now, once you get to the center line, this is when you want to start twisting the nose. You don't want it to come to this line. When it comes below it, but this is where the tip of the nose will start to curve. So bring your curve back until you sort of touch that line. And once you touch that line, you come a bit more straight. Curve this so it touches the center line, not this line, the center line. Curve that out to touch this line again. Now this line is going to curve down. And the reason you've got this line here is because this is the sort of shape you want the kind of lips to kind of go to. So bring back this curve so as if the curve is going to go straight into this line. Bring the line up on the outside. And have it so you've got like a little bit of a bump, you know, like on this lip, you know, so it sort of comes out, you know, nicely. You know, if it's too flat, it just doesn't look, you know, right. You want it to have a little bit of shape to it. And once you've got that curve, you can kind of bring this line up just a touch. Just above that line. You know, that's giving you the right kind of shape you need for that. That's bottom one. And curve this out. You don't want this to quite touch the line, but go towards this line. Then curve back. So halfway between this line and the center line. You know, so it's just a little bit further back than this top lip, but not too much. Very small amount. Curve that back. Up to that line. And now create a curve back coming onto this line, you know the one we've done from this bit. So you touch that line, curve out, so you touch this sort of middle line just slightly past it. Curving down and coming back. Now you want this line to come right back past this halfway line. Curving up, like so. Now we've done that. Bring this nostril. So you got this nose, comes up there, and now bringing a curve, just coming over that gap, like so, then curving up. Now you want to make sure that this nostril bit here curves further than this bit. If it's too close, this nostril won't look right. It has to come back far enough.
thing is important to keep sort of like keep correcting yourself. Like as you sort of do it, you, know, you can start start making little adjustments just to get everything the way you want it to. You know, you got the base of it, but you'll see the shape start coming together. You know, nothing major, no major adjustments. But you'll see the slight little bits you need to change. Bring this slightly up, I want the jaw a little bit weaker. Now, depending on how low you go, this is how strong the jaw will be. And it really goes by the type of uh, female you draw in, really, the kind of subject matter. So now we've got this, where you got this little gap bit here, where this kind of joins up. Imagine sort of a little start point here. And curve this back. Like so. Not quite coming to the halfway line, but coming close to it. So see about that kind of gap. Now you can adjust the eyebrow sort of like shape, you know, you can do that in a bit, but just roughly plot it in there for now. Because what this is going to show you is how to get the eye shape. So what we're going to do is going to curve a line coming from here. So this line slightly arcs and meets up with this centre line as it touches the tip of the nose. You see? Slightly curved there. And I do the same sort of thing coming from here. Slightly curving to that point in between this curve up. The point where you sort of bend it. Just there. Bring a little curve back from the eyebrow. Like that. So yeah, so you've got a line come here to there. For the eyebrow, just create a little curve bit there. And then what we want to do is get this line kind of curving just around here. Because as this line curves here, you want this to curve. So it sort of curves, touches the nostril, and curves back. That's where sort of cheekbone is, and that gives you the hint of where the bottom of this eye will be. And now this is the position, like you know, if you imagine what you're seeing now, this would sort of be like kind of almost like a closed eye position. If you had this coming down here, you know, what you do is you basically just bring your line across, depending on how how much you want the eye open. So I'm going to bring this curve here, bring some curve a little bit, it's just off the edge, cut the eyelash. a slight curve, go the other way, and put a little line just underneath, just create this bottom part of the eye. And it's going to link up. Now I like to make sure this bit comes out just a little bit further than this part does. Only ever so slightly. Put your little pupil bit just in there for now. So. Now this line here will be a lot thicker and this line will here will be a lot thicker and the shading has got to go in here. So for now I'm just going to create this eyebrow bit and make this the way I want it to. So I'm going to curve up, create a little arc, come to that corner. And just create a similar line at the top. A little hint of the other eye just on the other side, nothing major. Now the ear is going to sit in this location, if you can see the ear that is. And this head shape, imagine like if she was bald, would come around, off the back, connecting up the back bit there. But we're not going to do a bald. Now I'm going to do this guy's little... But your phone is non-stop ringing today. So that's it, we'll make it more feminine as we start putting the details in. So it's just getting everything so it sort of fits in the right locations. So for this one I'm going to do a new traditional, I'm going to bring in this like band in the hair, so I'm going to come back here from behind this ear, bring two lines up, Slightly getting wider as we get to the forehead. Bring that back. And we have two close lines to it. Now I'm just going to have this repeating oval shape pattern. Going the whole way up. Very typical pattern of like neo traditional. You're going to see that a hell of a lot. 
I'm going to bring in a bit of hair here. And now as we're old school, you kind of curve it there. I'm going to make it a bit more dynamic, so it's going to curve here. Come to a point. I'm going to flick it the other way. Come around. And when you're a traditional, you find the hair is usually a lot more dynamic. And on top of this, I'm going to add this curve back. I'm going to have a bit of jewelry sort of coming up, so I'm going to have like a bit here, some, maybe some ball bits on it. I curve back from this one, maybe have a second one, and then go into a large bit at the back of the hair. So I'm going to have this kind of curving over there. Similar sort of thing, come to a point. And curve it around. Bring this off at the back. And you're going to have like a hint of the ear at the bottom. And then earrings, so I'm going to make this sort of teardrop -y kind of shape. And I have little circles coming around the outside. And I'm going to make it like a red jewel bit in the center. And that's where you can kind of create yourself. I'm looking at it, and this jaw is way too strong. So I'm going to decrease this jaw now. Coming down roughly from like you know this part here, just a little bit before where the eyebrow finishes, come down. That's where you want the neck to finish. Just so gonna have this neck bit come here and curve there. That's it. It's gonna kind of come off of the back. So this here, I'm just gonna get some sort of free flare motion. So I'm just gonna curve, come to a point. Back, second one, you can have some leafy bits just coming up here, again just very typical of neo-traditional, just going to do a vine, some leafy shapes, come up to front, we'll do a bit of cover circle, colour circle just in front of her, bring the hair out a bit more. So, just a little bit just coming in from the side, a bit of a, a bit coming out the front, like so. So now I'm going to put in some pen work. I need to mix it like thick and thin lines. I'm going to get to this bit of neck, I'm not going to take this all the way, I'm just going to give it a little flick, just there. The neck. A bit of the eye line in. Band in the hair. Just like so. Don't hit it enough to be just there. This bearing just there in front of it. And as you can see, I've been selective with my lines because I want certain lines to be thin and certain lines to be thick to really get that near traditional vibe
underneath a bit. And judge me, it's not by a mile my best leaves. And I'll be taking my time a lot more with leaves. Just going there. And then I bring in my thinner liner, which is just here. I bring in my detail bits. Bring a curve back there just for the nostril bit. Curve back into it. His lips. Dry bitch, bringing those eyelashes. Put one come up off the back. Oval pattern in there. Bring the detail in the hair. Basically, just bring lines back. You know, they ain't got to be parallel. Well, you, you want to be parallel, but you don't have to have them the same distance apart. You know, some close, some far apart, some shaded differently. Lines back. I tend to go quite spaced out with my lines, but you can have like a lot more, a lot more closer together if you like. It really is personal preference on that one.
Details. And then I put a circle in afterwards. Just rub out that pencil work. And we can start getting some shading in. I'm just going to use my markers, but you can use whatever you feel like. I don't feel like you have to use these, you know, it's not necessary. So I feel like once I sort of see roughly where I'm going to put the shading. Just around this nostril bit, coming up here. A little bit coming up here, just top of this nose. Do you want to quit this cap a little bit? Like so. I'll flick that up. I mean, I'm seeing this gap joining up to the eyebrow. Flicking off of there, flicking off both sides of this bottom part. Doing a slight circle of light just in that area, just there. Setting the rest of there. We'll flick down from the top. Under his lip and chin, around this lip part. Come back off that chin, come back up there. You'll need like a light section just here. Cheekbone just there. And so just there. Flick that out so it's sort of nice and phased. Remember, this pen will line up as it sinks in. That's the rough locations you want to shade. You've got a bit in your own stuff, but the actual facial structure that's what you want. You just want it darker in certain areas. Start with the black, it's going to flick in a little bit of black just here and there. Nothing too crazy. Gray. Blend that black out. Certain areas like above the eye, you want this quite dark. Just around this nostril.
Not too much around the bottom of the eye, just a little bit. Just a hint of it. Now, if you, use, if you are using the markers, always give it a chance to dry so you can see how it looks once it dries. Because the colours will change as they dry to go much lighter. You, know, you don't overwork a certain area when it will dry up and go the colour you want it afterwards. Put on this lip. A highlight on that bottom lip. I'm going to shut up to kind of tell the uh, jawline. So you can start to see now as it's slowly drying how a lot of it is slowly coming together. Couple of flesh tones, so I can work in some colour. Also, one. How's this brush going to come on this paper? Not too dark. I'm going to use flesh tone, I'm also going to use some blue. And I'm going to use the blue to make certain areas sort of cold shading. Okay, just under this nostril. I'm going to go blue. Just initially under this eye bit. I'm going to flick in some blue. Not too much, but a little bit just on the cheekbone. A little bit at the bottom of the jaw. Touch just through there. Nothing too crazy of it. Now I'm going to quickly blend into that with a flesh tone. Now, what this will do is just creates a sense of warm and dark shading. Now you don't have to, it's just something I like to do with these. Especially on neo-traditional, it looks very good. On old school, it's just a bit too much sometimes. It takes away from what old school is supposed to be. But neo-traditional, it definitely works. Stronger flesh tone in just certain areas. Wrong one. Mm, 
Ain't too much, just certain little, just a few little hint areas. And then blend them out. Purple just to make up some makeup and some lippy bits. It's not very strong. Come on, the slightly stronger purple, and then blend it out the weaker one. Just create a little bit of eyeshadow and a little hint of lip colour. Pupil, Kyren. Part. A little shadow just underneath the eyelash. So you can see the face starting to come together now. And as it comes together, you start to see where it is you need a bit more shape. Like this jawline just needs a little bit more cheekbone. This is why it's always good to build it up in stages because you kind of get a better feel for it. A little hint just coming from behind this necklace bit. Here we will be. And blend it up. So you can see it's you know it's very much like a building up process, you know, you just slowly build it up. And eventually you have something like that. Now that's just the face. So now we can start. And then you have a little bit of details. So what I'm going to do, the outside bit of these ovals, I'm just going to colour in black. Then the inside I'm going to do red, so those little outside stripes, maybe yellow or orange or something. Been a bit messy with this, I'm just quickly putting this in. If I was doing this like as a proper sort of design, I would take my time and make sure this is all perfect. Top bit. It's going to come in ruby red.
y a la cama. Adiós. I'm just going to do this jewelry bit here, so it's going to have this big sort of teardrop shape on that side, circle that side, colour in the rest. Simple, same things at the top, going to have the yellow come around it. I'm just going to do yellow and the balls are going to do different colours, I think. It's going to come in my black, it's going to flick this in. This is how I normally do my hair, but I'll show you on one of the other strands how you can do it also. Right, great. Now what you can do is flick in your greys. Same sort of thing, but make them different on each one. You could have like this one solid grey, this one light. This one fairly light. This one solid black. You know, that's great. I just did the top bit like that so you can see and I'll do these ones differently. See, so put a black line, black line. Darker grey. You can just have them all like you know different kind of shades if you want. You see, you have some sort of kind of solid across, some light across. Do that for the whole thing and it gives a really cool effect, so that's pretty much what I'm going to do quickly and show you guys. Yeah, so you can see I was putting all like the random blacks. I started flicking in like the back, so I'm just going to grey over some of that black on the dark grey. Start dragging them through. Working out over that black. Give that a great. Once done that, you can sort of like put in the bits you kind of feel like you need it. So, 
Well, this bit needs to be black to break this up. I'm just going to shade like normal. It's blue. Nice little beach just down here. Little bead necklace. some highlights. Just a little bit of white just top of the eyelid. A little bit just in the eye. Bit on the nose. Not too crazy. Bit in the lip and just on top of the lip. Chin. And just a little line, just kind of the side. Maybe a little bit of white just in there. Just a little faint hint of it. Just on the cheek. And up there. Just a little bit in each one of these, just a little highlights to the corner. Just like so. Now these leaves, I'm going to have brown into gold. My brown coming up this side, come down from the top. So I'm going to brown come up one side, come down the other. Working into a golden yellow. Some little detail lines after I've coloured them in. across nothing symmetric like so 
so. And I'll see if I can find my pencil. This one. Circular shape in here. Go just in a thinner line. By no means my best circle. Sorry, that was just a really poor circle, it's bugging me. So I'm just gonna go black and fade the black into the red, into orange, into yellow. Can't believe how bad that circle was. Still nice and perfect, but. The circles are usually so spot on. Do I have a brush for the green? I should use my prayer. So I'm just working through the colours, slowly going down to get into that yellow tone. Normally I would just go black, orange, red, but obviously because I sort of kind of rewrite that bloody circle, I went dark. just around the edge of this.
Don't build that, it's just on the inside. Got one of these pearls, blue. Lastly, black in there. And there we have it. Let's draw a new traditional female face. So you can see, I mean, it's not overly realistic, but it just had that hint more realism than usual stuff. Now I have that subject, get everything in proportion. And I've got everything a bit more accurate. And a broken puppet. And I'll see you next time. Peace out.